Okay, let's see. Oh, it looks like we're streaming. Are we streaming here? No. No, we're not. What's going on? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, there was obviously some delay. I'm using my mobile phone to see if we're actually streaming or not. And that way I can check on any uh, comments or any questions or concerns that anyone watching may have. And we can hopefully address that in real time. Okay, so why am I hearing my own voice here? Uh, so I need to... Ah, that's the reason why, because we're actually listening to myself, which is probably not the best thing to do. Okay, so let's get down to it. So this is where we left off last time, uh, last stream. We had, if we play the scene, we've got our little character there, and it can shoot at his enemies dropping down. Now... So the, the mechanics are, are pretty much all there, really. So this is obviously not a completed game, but a lot of the the core mechanics are all sorted. But it sort of looks kind of rubbish, and that's because we don't have any graphics assets. And that's what we're going to try and address uh, today, or, the, or in this stream. So what the first thing we're going to do is we'll get you to... Uh, download the GIMP because some of these assets we're going to be creating ourselves and some of them we are actually going to be uh, let's use that So and some of them we're actually going to be just getting from uh, Creative Commons and public domain uh, sites so what you're going to want to do is you want to go to the GIMP and get gimp www.gimp.org slash downloads and download whichever version is going to be most suitable for your operating system. Okay, so you probably want to do that. Uh, probably it's not going to download and we're not going to waste time. I'm not going to like wait for you to download it. You can always re-watch this stream. You may already have it on your system anyway. So, but the GIMP is basically a Photoshop type application so let's have a look so what do we need to create for our game so obviously we're going to need a uh, spaceship we're going to need enemy spaceships and we're going to need bullets so and the other thing we could do is we could create a nice little background so let's 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 open. Let's let's create some assets first, and that way we become can become a little bit familiar with the GIMP while we do this. Okay, so again, this is not strictly a Godot tutorial. It's not even a GIMP tutorial. It's just a workflow. So let's go to graphics. So you just load up GIMP however you load it up on your operating system. And unfortunately, mine's a bit on the slow side. Okay, so it opens up in window, in these little separate window things. So what I want to do is let's start off with creating a background. So now, what did we say it was? It was 420 wide by 640 long. Okay, so I've just created a document that's 420 pixels by 640. And that number relates to our project size so we have 420 by 640 so that's where I got those numbers from now we're going to delete the background layer okay and we're going to try let's create some a star field so what we'll do is we'll add a background and we'll call this space background Okay, and we can give this a black fill. So I click the fill. Sorry, I click the, well, we didn't need to click because it should already be black. Click the, click the bucket tool, kick the bucket, no, click the bucket tool. 
and then we just fill and so we've created a black background. Then we're going to add a new layer and we're going to call this one um, stars I guess and so we make sure it's highlighted and we're going to go to filters and we're going to add some noise and we might add some hurl noise and if you can randomize it and this will just sort of create a different set of noise so it might be different from someone else that's doing this exact same thing so let's go okay and that creates this dotty sort of noise of different colors what we're going to do is let's make it black and white so we're going to use a thing called desaturate and then we got oh, we don't need to change foreground color um, so we click desaturate well, actually let's go back because there's other window in the way so colors desaturate and you can choose any of these it really doesn't matter for this purpose okay and so believe it or not that's now black and white so if we zoom in to say 200 percent it's actually black and white now that's a lot of stars probably a few too many for my liking might be fine for your liking so what we're going to do is we're going to change the level so what the levels does is changes what is black uh, and gray so if, if we want gray dark gray to be black or, or whatever so what we're going to do is see that little arrow there we're going to grab that slider and watch what happens as I pull it across see how it's the lighter gray ones are now blending into the black and so we've got like a little starfield thing here so maybe about actually let's just go to a hundred percent just so we can see sort of what it looks like actually let's go so we can see the whole thing okay that's and that's probably too small I can't really see so so let's see Okay, so that, that, that should be a, 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 an acceptable density of stars. So let's make this a bit longer there. So that, this could be our background. Now, if you want to make things look really cool, let's duplicate. Actually, we're not going to duplicate the layer. Let's create a new layer and let's do the same thing again. So we are going to go filters. Now we could just repeat hurl, but we're not. We're going to do it the hard way. We're going to go noise, hurl. Now I want to get a, a new seed, okay, because I want it to look different. Okay. And now this time, so remember we desaturate. This time what I want to do is I only want a couple of stars. And there is a re there is method behind my madness. Not much, mainly madness. A little bit of method. Okay, so we go to levels. And so this time actually because I've got this layer selected, let's just deselect that. So what we want to do is this time we want it cranked up pretty high, so we only want a few stars. So we're probably going to be going so maybe about there. So I've only got a few stars, so that's the star field from the first one, and that's what we've got today. So there's you know a couple there. Let's go okay. Now we're going to go filters. Uh, lights and shadow and let's go sparkle so what the sparkle one does is adds a little bit of flare so let's go 20% flare and now watch what happens when we do this so it's processing it see how it's added so if I zoom in to 200% it's added like little flary sparkly bits to some of the stars so when we add this so let's, when we add this to the previous layer we've got quite a nice little starscape so that, that's a quick and easy way you can create a starscape so what we're going to do let's export this so let's go export as 
and let's go recently used super defender uh, source so now one thing we haven't so this is the um, project file for our game that we're making so one thing we haven't done is we don't have a sprite folder so let's create a sprite folder so we go create folder sprite okay and now let's call this I don't know background maybe background Let, let's let's give it a number like let's call it background zero zero and that and that way you know we, we later on we might want different levels with different backgrounds so let's go export export okay so now when we go back to our engine we now have a folder called sprite and I'm actually going to rename that to sprites just so we've got some consistency on our naming and so that was the so sprites was created using the GIMP uh, that directory I should say and in that we have this background.00 PNG. So how do we use this? So let's go to our level. Oh, the other thing that should be noted, when you close your close a project and reopen it, it only opens the scene, the main scene. So remember last time we had player, enemies, spawner, yada yada yada. Because we close it down, it only loads up the um, the the main the main scene okay so uh, what we're going to do now is actually I just want to check to make sure are we still live yes we are live that's cool um, where are we there we are okay so what we're going to do is we're going to on our level oh sorry no just to go back a little sooner so let's just say we wanted to get back to our player scene we could do it one of two ways we could click on open in editor that thing and then that'll open our player scene or you can just go to scenes player.tscn and double click on that and that'll also open it but we'll do that in due course so let's click on whoops click on level zero and we're going to add a sprite s-p-r-i-t-e now we're going to call this sprite background. Now, for those of you who have used this before, you know that there is going to be a slight problem with me doing this, but we'll get to it in due course. So we're going to add a texture, and the texture we're going to add is the newly created background. So let's go sprites, background. Okay, and as we can see, we've got our sprite there now. The thing is, this rectangle there, that's our game canvas, or whatever you want to call it, and our sprite is sort of there. And the reason for that is, is that the sprite's origin is the center of the sprite and is being pinned to the position zero, zero. Now, we could drag this where it needs to be, but would have to be pretty accurate. The other way we can do it is we go to our, so we're on our sprite background, we go to the properties, we go to offset, and we change centered to off. And now, as you can see, it's in the screen. So we won't do that. So I'll take that off and I'll play the game, and you can see what happens when it, so this is the wrong way. See how we're only getting a quarter of it. Okay, so we're getting a quarter of it. But if we close this down and we t and we say we don't want the cent we don't want it centered, we want the top right corner to be its origin, top left corner I should say to be its origin. Now when we play, hit play, it's sort of how it should be. Okay? But it's not really how it should be. And the reason for that is where's our player? Okay? If I push space, it fires the bullets but we can't see our player. And the reason for that is if we have a look, background is on the bottom. So this sort of works in reverse to a lot of other programs with layers and stuff like that. 
the the node or with sorry with all things being equal the node at the base at the bottom is the one that will be is the one that overlaps everything else so what we can do is we can highlight this one hold control and push the up arrow and as you can see we've moved it to the top I'm just gonna move it below the spawner enemy and as you can see now we can see the player so when we click play we have our character there and now I can shoot and stuff like that okay so we've just created our um, background so what we want to do now is we want to create some spaceships so there's a website here called open uh, or uh, opengameart.org and they have a lot of uh, public domain open source creative commons type artwork so one that I like the look of is this so this is uh, it's called the spaceship buildings bits and that's the and that's the I'll, I'll pop this in the description uh, for later on for those on the discord channel I've already linked this I'll, I'll link this up the other the other day so what we're going to do is one thing to be very uh, aware of is you just got, can't go randomly downloading art off the internet and claiming it as yours sometimes you can well you can't claim it as yours but sometimes it's public domain um, but sometimes these people are very generous and they say you can use it but they they want to be acknowledged so the person who created this is Stephen uh, Challoner okay so we should give Stephen credit if we're using his artwork in our game and we will be doing that okay so what we want to want to download is I'm going to go with sprite sheet parts 2 higher contrast so I'm going to click that I'm going to save it now obviously depending on your operating system you're going to get something that looks different so I'm going to save this to my project super defender and we're going to call it right sheets there so now it doesn't really matter where you save it as long as you know where it is okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the thing so here I have it okay as I said it doesn't matter where you save it but I'm going to now open this with the GIMP okay so I'm going to go open with GIMP and it opens the this file here now one of the issues with this is this doesn't have a transparent layer so we're going to have to do a little bit of editing but first of all we want to pick our spaceship so which spaceship should we use I don't know let's use uh, that, one looks, that one looks pretty cool now let's should we go the, the beastie one uh, decisions, decisions. Uh, yeah, let's just go with this one. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select that, make sure. So, oh, I should explain what I'm doing. I've selected the box tool, so that's that thing there. And what we're doing is we're going to select a box around it. So let's use this one. Okay, now we want to make sure we want to make sure we don't have anything else. So I'm just going to bring that there. So I've sort of selected that. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to image crop to selection. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in so we can see what we're doing. So let's zoom in 200%. So that that's our ship there now. The thing is, I don't, this looks like, because it, it's in bold there, it doesn't look like it's got an alpha channel. So we right click and, oh, it does have an alpha channel. Oh no, add alpha channel. So I'm gonna click add alpha channel. And so what that means is that means that when we delete the white, it'll leave a transparency, okay? So 
what we're going to do is we're going to use the magic wand tool, okay, or fuzzy select tool, and we're going to click on the white bit, and then I'm going to push delete, okay, and so that's now deleted the white. But what I want to also do is I want some consistency, so I'm going to change the canvas size, so I go to image canvas size, we're going to change the canvas size to 64 by 64 and we're going to go resize now I'm going to create a new layer it doesn't have to be called stars that's just what, I've, what that one is but on this spaceship layer we're going to make sure it's highlighted we are going to right click alpha to selection so what that does is that just selects the ship then we're going to go to layer and we're going to crop to selection now why we're doing this I'm just and then we're going to select that layer there and we're going to move it up to the top now why we're doing this is we want this ship to be centered so we're going to use the align tool is this one we're going to click on that now we're going to click on our spaceship as you can see we get four dots and that's saying well that's the region that we're going to be aligning we're going to relative to image and we want the center of target and watch what happens to the spaceship it moves to the center and into the middle okay so what we can do now is that's our spaceship we can go export as and then we go to where we've got our uh, sprites for our game and we can call it player.png okay and then we go export so we export that out okay so what we're going to do is let's have a look actually know what we won't do we'll, we'll do we'll close this down so we won't worry about saving but what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing but for some enemy ships okay so let's open up this sprite sheet that we just downloaded and we'll use the GIMP again so again this is going to be exactly the same thing so I'm going to move a little faster this next time but I'm still going to go through it just in case you missed anything the first time and we're going to pick an enemy ship okay so which enemy ship should we pick let's pick uh, let's pick this one no let's yeah let's pick that one so we highlight that image uh, crop to selection and let's just move that there. let's zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing now oop, we need to add an alpha channel because it doesn't already have one then we need to get the fuzzy select tool select the white hit delete so we've just removed that white background and now what we need to do is we need to layer and we're going to crop to selection so whoop, except sorry my mistake the selection is actually this everything but the ship so we're going to go alpha to selection and that will select the ship and we go layer crop to selection so we've cropped this layer to just the extents of the ship we're going to go new layer and in fact what we can do we'll do things a little bit differently this way when we're creating a new layer we'll make it the desired size so we'll make it 64 by 64 make sure transparency is selected go OK uh, and again that actually didn't work but uh, if we go image canvas size 
uh, and make that 64 by 64 resize okay now we want to move this up to the up to the top layer we are going to use the alignment tool we are going to select that we are going to it's already on image now we're going to center of target and middle of target and so that has now centered that spaceship like that okay so let's go export as to our sprite directory and let's call this let's call this enemy enemy dot png and let's export that okay so what we're going to do now while we're sort of gimping around let's create a bullet or a projectile or whatever you want to call it so let's go new and let's make this uh, 32 by 32 actually it probably doesn't even have to be that big that so so it's created this little thing up here and uh, these little tracky mouse things are very picky okay and let's zoom in so let's go let's go 800 okay let's delete the background add a new layer and it's called stars only because I haven't got around to changing the layer, but it doesn't actually doesn't matter. So let's let's call this bullet. I don't know bullet. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use the rectangular select and let's create maybe something like that. So it's a three by three rectangle. And now I'm going to push those little two arrows to get the white to the foreground. And let's fill that. Now let's, uh, let's 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 go back to the boxy thing again, and so what I'm doing is I'm creating another little box thing there. Now, alternatively, you can just use the the pencil layer. Well, in fact, let's let's do it using the pencil layer. So I'll get the pencil layer. So I'm going to type. I'm going to move onto here and go Control A to select everything. So we're going to pencil layer. Uh, pencil tool I should say size we're going to go down to one pixel I'm going to train change the brush to the pixel whoops yes that did work and then we just click 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 whoops click click okay maybe a bit longer there so that's going to be our bullet now just so we can see how it looks let's create a new layer and call this one background and highlight that and this time push the arrows things again get the black on the top bucket fill fill now we've filled over it so that layers above it so let's move it down and you can see there we go there okay so let's get it looking kind of a little bit cooler now what we're going to do is let's right click alpha to selection so that's just selecting that uh, bullet thing there let's create a new layer okay so I've created a new layer now what we want to do is we're going to grow that selection because we want to make a glow around it so let's go edit no it's not edit it's select and grow let's grow by one pixel okay so we've just grown that selection there now what we want to do is let's feather it okay so we're going to feather and let's feather it by four okay now so make sure that that layer there let's call it glow actually so I know what we're talking about so glow so I just double clicked on that to change the layer now let's make sure that that is so we want white up the top so we click the reverse the arrow thing 
make sure the bucket selected which it is and then we click that okay so by clicking that you can see that we've added a glow to the to the bullet okay so what we want to do is we want to get the little um, box tool and let's select a center pixel. So actually let's can we just gonna type let's type twelve hundred. Okay, so I've selected the center a center pixel, a single pixel in the middle. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to feather that. So we're going to make sure we're on the glow layer. And we are going to feather that by, uh, let's say, 2. So, feather, so it's feathered by 2. Now what we're going to do is make sure that's selected. I'm going to hit delete uh, about five times. One, two, three, four, five. Now, it doesn't look like anything's happened, but it has. So if I hide the bullet layer, you'll notice that there's a hole there, okay? And this is gonna come in handy a bit later on, okay? So you just gotta sort of trust me on this one, but it is gonna come in handy later on. So what my intention is, is we're gonna have a bullet and it's gonna have a glow around it. And to give it a laser feel, we always want the bullet to be white and we want the glow to be able to be changed in color. And we're gonna do that in Godot, okay? So what we need to do now is we need to export this, but we don't wanna export it with the black background. We wanna hide the background. We wanna hide the bullet, so we've just got the glow. We're gonna export this. So export as sprites and let's go projectile glow pro projectile actually let's call it projectile zero zero because we might have different projectiles later on projectile zero zero underscore glow it doesn't matter what you call it as long as it's something that's meaningful for you and then we go export and now we hide that layer and we go to bullet make sure it's selected and we're going to call we're going to export as and we're going to call this one just projectile zero zero dot png okay so that should be all we need to do in the gimp so we can quit the gimp don't worry about well you can save them if you want uh, there's no huge drama there so what we've actually got now is we're in our, our sprites in our sprites thing in our sprites folder we've got a whole bunch of assets so let's get cracking so let's hide that one let's go to our scenes and go to player and let's so the sprite at the moment has got the Godot icon attached to it let's click the down and go load into sprites and let's load the player sprite okay let's do the same for the enemy so where's the enemy there's the enemy there let's go oops so we click on the sprite let's go to the texture and we're going to load go into sprites and let's check on that now there is there is something that is going to become a little bit of an issue and that's because that's facing in the wrong direction but we're going to address that in just a moment so, and let's go to our projectile. Now for our projectile, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different, okay? We're actually gonna create, we're gonna give it another sprite, okay? So we're gonna have sprite, and then we're gonna have a, we're going to make sure that's highlighted. And we're gonna go plus, we're going to add another sprite, but we're going to call this sprite. We're going to 
rename, so I double click on that, we're gonna call it Glow. So we go to the first sprite, and we're gonna change the texture to load. And we're gonna select the projectile. We're gonna to go to the Glow, Texture, Load, Sprites, and the projectile Glow, okay? So let's let's see what the state of affairs is so far. So let's push play. And as you can see, this is looking considerably better, considerably better than before. Two issues are the bullet is very, very small, and these ships are facing the wrong way. So let's see why that's happening. So the bullet's very, very small, because if you remember in projectile, we were using the um, we were using the Godot icon, but we didn't want it to be so big. So in our uh, physics processes, when we went to push the fire button, we actually changed the scale of the instance. So we can actually delete this line now. So let's delete that because we don't. We no longer need to scale it to the quarter of the size. So let's see how this looks now. Okay, so as you can see, that's looking a lot better now. Okay, one issue is you can see that it's originating in the center of the spaceship. And the reason for that is, is because the projectile instance position is being set to the same position of the um, spaceship. So to fix that, what we can do is this very similar thing, projectile instance dot position this time we're going to be changing the Y position equals projectile instance dot Y. Now remember, going up is negative, so let's subtract, I don't know, let's see how it looks if we subtract 10 pixels. So that means that it's going to instance 10 pixels above where it was. So let's have a look here. Whoa. Invalid index. Okay, oops. So the error we're getting is invalid index y, and that's because I forgot to put position dot y. So, so okay. So as you can see, it's still sort of coming from pretty much the cockpit bit there. So we probably want another extra couple of pixels on top of that there. Actually, I'm just going to give myself a bit more working room here. So why don't we say 16 and see how that works. Okay, still could do a bit more. Let's change that to 24. Okay, so that's looking a bit better there, isn't it? So it seems to be seems to be sort of coming out from the front of the ship rather than from underneath it somewhere. Okay, so let's adjust these characters here. So let's go to our spawner. Uh, actually, no, let's go to our enemy script. And in our ready, so ready is called every time it's instanced or added to the scene tree. Let's go scale. So this is the scale of the enemy. Okay. Okay, so scale. Actually, no. Let's let's get our where is our enemy there? So let's access the sprite. Okay, so variable sprite equals dollar sign sprite. Okay, so that means that we can now access. Oops. We're getting an error because we need an on ready. Okay, on ready. So what we're going to do now is let's access that sprite, it's P R I T E, and let's access its rotation. No, we're not going. To, we don't necessarily rotate. Let's just access its scale. Um, 
scale. We could access its rotation, but let's just do it scale. Equals, and the reason why we're doing this is it's better to use scale for when you come time doing things with platformers and, and stuff like that, left and right directions. It's just a lot easier doing it this way. So vector two. So we don't want to change the x scale along the x axis, so we'll keep that at one. But we want to flip it around the y axis, so let's invert it by using a negative one. So let's click play. Why have we got an error there? Um, ah, that's because spite, it should be sprite. There we go. Now when we click this, and we've got the spaceships coming down in the right direction. Okay. Now, yep, so that's working. Now, one thing is though, watch what happens as when I shoot this. It actually doesn't can seem to connect. It's so I can be right off to the side here and it still kills it, and it actually the bullet destroys it before it hits it. Now, the reason for that is is because of our collision boxes collision shapes. So let's get to work on that. So remember we had a collision shape which was a square to represent a rectangle I should say to represent the icon. Let's change that to a capsule shape and in this time in this case it actually seems tends to work out quite nicely. It never usually does actually but let's edit it anyway. Let's make it slightly not as high. Ooh. So let's go to 18 high. No, let's go to 15 high. Okay, so what that's saying now is that's the collision shape. But we also need to change the collision shape of the projectile. So I'm going to use the mouse wheel to scroll in. Again, let's go collision shape and change it to a capsule. And let's edit it. And let's change it to, actually, let's not use a capsule. Let's use something different so we can push the back arrow there. Let's go for a circle. Okay, but what we want to do is we want that bullet, the head of the bullet to be the, the hitboxy type thing. So let's go and edit this. Edit and make it smaller. So let's give it a radius of, I don't know, about two. Yep, so two should be right, but notice how it's sort of not quite, it's at the tail. So what we want to do now is we want to go, sorry, just to, so I didn't go too fast, we push the back arrow, transform, and we go to position, y-axis, so we want to go up, don't we? So it's going to be a negative, negative, um, uh, let's go negative two, no, negative three. Now this actually raises a really important point. And I probably should have saved my work on the GIMP. You'll notice that the bullet is slightly off center, okay? And that's because I didn't actually center it when I made it. So let's use a dirty trick. Uh, let's go back to our sprites. So I, I and this is completely my fault, we should have done it properly the first time. Let's go to, oh, we've got to change both the projectiles, don't we? Okay, we may as well. Um, so let's open this in the GIMP editor. Okay. So again, this is totally my fault, I should have done it properly the first way. Let's, Alpha to selection, uh, alpha to selection. So that's highlighting the the bullety thing. And we're going to go layer. We are going to crop to selection. We're going to select the align tool relative to image. We're going to select the um, bullety thing, and we're going to go center and middle and then we're going to overwrite the projectile okay 
So we're going to do the exact same thing for the glow. Otherwise, it's going to look all wonky. So, so again, the only reason why I'm doing this is because I really should have done this when I actually created the asset. So this is um, poor planning on my behalf. So let's go 800. Let's go alpha to selection. Let's go layer, crop to selection. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Oh, there we go. Align first item. We're going to go image. Then we select that, and then center, center, and then we overwrite projectile glow. Okay, so that's should have fixed the complete dog's breakfast that we had, but it's also going to change everything here. So uh, let's just reload this and then exit that okay so it is a little bit off center there as well why is that okay that's because we're working in pixels and we're obviously splitting a pixel so we can fix that um, but we're not going to fix it just yet we're going to get this all correct here so let's that was too high now so we're going to go back to our positioning and let's go to minus three let's go to minus two okay now let's move the x so we're going to move it maybe one and that's too far so let's move it 0.5 now i know the concept of 0.5 of a pixel sounds a bit weird but you got to run with me here okay so the collision shape is there and so now when we play the game it should when something actually hits the thing it actually hits it and as it hits that's when it disappears and if I go off to the side because the collision box doesn't take into account the wings it means we've got to be really spot on Okay, so I said earlier that we're gonna we want to have some color change with the glow. So let's look into that now. So let's go to our projectile and let's go into our script. Now let's go on ready ver glow equals dollar sign sprite glow okay so what I want to do now is we're gonna do something called modulating the color of the sprite sounds really fancy but it's just a way of changing the color so let's go glow so we're going to access this node this node sprite node we're going to go modulate and let's modulate the red channel and let's give it a value of one now watch what happens when we do this absolutely nothing okay why okay so let's so modulate equals color Okay, so let's so let's say it's going to be one for red, zero green. Oops, got to put some commas, comma, and we'll give it an alpha of one. Okay, there we go. So we've given it this red look. So the the laser has now got this sort of red red hue to it. If it was a little bit too red, we could change the red value to maybe 0.5 red. If you want it to be more purple, so purple is red plus blue, so RGB, so that's going to be that one. Let's give that a 0.5. Oops, put zero. 
And so this way, it's sort of a bit more purpley. Okay, so I think I am gonna go with a more blue of a bullet. So what the modulate does is the modulate modulates the color of the of the sprite. So we're not actually modulating the um, the the underlying bullet, just the glow around it. And we can make the glow a little less less uh, apparent by changing the alpha value. So instead of being one, we can add some transparency to it. And I think that looks quite, quite nice. Okay, so the final thing we're gonna do is let's add some explosions because everybody loves explosions. So what we need to do is we need to go to our open game art and this, uh, so the URL is there, hey, uh, opengameart.org slash content slash explosion. Now the one that we're going to want to download is XP2 PNG, so let's click on that. Save file. Now this one is all ready to go, so let's chuck it in there, go to our sprites, but let's call this explosion, okay, explosion PNG, so we're going to save that one. Did that save? Okay, let's just see if that actually saved. Yep, looks like it saved. There we go. Yep, it did. Ex it did save. So what we're going to do now is we're going to learn how to use the animation player. But what we want to do is we want to see what happens when a enemy. So we'll go to the enemy code. So when the so remember when we're going back to the earlier thing, we had the enemy, and if something entered its area, if it was a projectile, uh, it would destroy itself, and if it hit the player, it would um, just register a hit. What we're going to do now, what we want now, is we want, if it's hit by a projectile, before it destroys itself, what we want to do is we want to instance something. And we're going to instance an explosion. Now we don't actually have an explosion, do we? Ins instance. So let's create a new scene and this scene, we, it will be a sprite. And let's call it explosion. Explosion. Control S to save. Let's save it in the scenes. Okay, now, what we want to do now is click that, click the explosion, and we're going to add an animation player. Animation player. So the animation player, okay. And click on the animation player. And we are going to add, create, so, so I'll do that. So I'll click on animation, create a new animation. We're gonna call this explosion, explosion. Okay. Now, we're going to go to our explosion sprite and we're going to set the texture. So the texture we want is this explosions. But if we have a look, that's going to look like a pretty rubbish explosion because it looks like we've just blown up, I don't know, 12 things. So what we want to do is we want to set a region. So we're going to go region enabled on and we want the region we want the rectangle, I should say. The width to be, I think it's 64. And the height to be 64. So what that's saying is that's saying we've got a big image 
but we're going to be using a small chunk of it and that chunk is going to be 64 pixels by 64 pixels starting at position 0 0 for the x and y okay so again it's going to make won't make that much sense just yet but it will so what we want to do is because we've got an animation player see we've got that key let's add a keyframe create new track property for region rect and insert key create okay now what we want to do is we want to move across using the arrow to 0 0.1 so I just um, so you can basically just click there and, and find the thing or you can you know type in whatever you want to get there so but what we want to do is we want to go 0.1 now what we want to do is go to our rect before so remember if you don't have any of this just click on animation player then explosion okay and it's under region okay now see how it looks sort of like that now to get to where it needs to be we've got the animation so just click that word animation and it gets back to there okay so that's if you ever get too lost so back to point one now what we're going to type is we're going to type x64 and leave the zero as it push enter then push the key so we're setting a new keyframe same thing again now this time let's just push the up arrow to point two let's change this so 64 plus 64 which will be 128 enter and then add a keyframe and then push the up to go to point three of a second same thing again 128 plus 64 equals 192 add a keyframe go up now something odds gonna happen now so if we go 192 plus 64 we get nothing or well, we get that whatever that is so and the reason for that is if we go back to our texture region we have one two three four we're now trying to access that square there which has nothing so to get around that go back to the animation player and we go back to zero but we move down so we're now going to go down by 64 pixels same thing again hit the key button arrow up to get to 0.5 now remember we are on the second row so we keep the y as it is but change the x to 64 key that frame go to 0.6 then we're going to go to 128 key the frame so I'm going to move a little bit swifter now because you should have the hang of it by now Let's do it. So 128 plus 64, 192. Key it in. Sorry. And then go up. And then remember, we're going to go to zero and then change that to 128. So we go on the next row. Key it in. So as I said, then go 64. Key it in, go to one, go 128, key it in. Now we actually run out of space here. So when I'm clicking up, nothing's happening. So what we want to do is let's change the duration to 1.2, enter. So now we can move it up in time. Let's change that to 192, enter, key it in, go up. Now remember, we're at the end, so we want to go down another one, so we go zero, and then 192, key it in. And we've got to the end of it again, so let's add, add bias a little bit more time, so let's go 1.5 this time. Go up. Um, now I've just lost my place. 
so okay so move along there so that's going to be 64 enter key it in up 128 enter key it in and then up 192 enter key it in so what we've created is an animation so when we play it though we're going to notice something a bit odd so we'll go so it's from the beginning if we push play uh, it doesn't look that good does it and the reason for that is it's when it's it's inter it's in inter in no, interpolating in a continuous manner so we want to have it to do it in a discrete manner so now when we click play we get this nice explosion so let's zoom in there so let's go back to the beginning we push play we get this nice explosion there okay so let's create a little bit of code so we're going to attach a script and go up into the scripts thing and it's explosion open create now what we want is we want to create a now again this is probably a bit of an overkill but it's good practice on ready the anim equals equals animation player so we want to connect we want to we want this explosion to disappear when the animation is finished so to do that we're going to connect up to a signal so we're going to connect whoops we're going to go anim dot connect animation finished to self now this node nodes have got some built-in functions and remember how we use that queue free so we don't actually so we can actually access the queue free node so you know before when we would create we'd say you know when blah blah done something did something self go to function on animation finished and we could do that but we can save ourselves some time by saying when the animation is finished on ourself we'll call the queue free uh, method okay so let's see what happens here so we play that and nothing happens now the reason why nothing happens is because there was nothing to tell the animation to begin so you could have auto start there auto play so if I pushed play what would happen is when we run that scene as you can see in that top right corner look at the top left corner I should say we get an explosion okay but let's do it the hard way because I love the pain and suffering so we're not going to have it auto play let's go anim dot play explosion so what this is saying is access the animation player node pl and play the animation called explosion okay so now when we play now remember top left corner bang it works okay so all that's left now is to go to our enemy our enemy code and let's instance this explosion so variable explosion so this is very similar to what we've been doing on the last video explosion instance uh, so I won't go into it a great deal but basically we want to assign a instance uh, so where is it? explosion of a scene to a variable dot instance okay and we probably want the position uh, the explosion instance position explosion instance dot position 
to be the position of itself. So self. So what that's saying is that if it got hit, it would explode. It itself would ex look like it's exploding. Uh, position. Okay. Now remember, we need to add it. So we need to add it to the scene tree. So let's get the parent. Dot and let's add child and it's going to be the explosion dot instance okay and then so what's going to happen is it's going to create a new instance of the explosion it's going to kill the enemy but the explosion is still going to exist because it was instanced to the um, canvas and then so it's going to call this explosion which is going to play the animation and then when it's finished it's going to it's going to um, kill the node. Okay, so let's have a look and see how this looks. We'll see if it works first. So let's see, so let's, there we go. So it's actually beginning to look like something. Okay. So let's, let's leave, so let's leave it, let's leave it at this. Okay, so we we didn't do a great deal of coding this game, uh, but game development is not always about coding. It's about design. It's about uh, other assets. So it's like about graphics. It's about music. It's about sound design. You, there are so many hats you need to wear when developing games. So let's call it a day today. Uh, got any comments? Any suggestions? Anything that wasn't clear? Um, you know, leave a leave a message, and I'll try and address these, and we'll see we'll see how we go. Now, what we need to do is I remember last stream, it there was a bit of a delay. Uh, it, it sort of cut it a bit short, so we'll just leave this going. So you can pretty much uh, finish finish watching uh, now if you want, and 